Welcome to the PR Maven podcast, a podcast all about growing your network and building your brand through traditional and digital networking techniques. I'm Nancy Marshall, the PR Maven and CEO of Marshall Communications. Stay tuned for this week's episode and thanks for listening. Hello, PR Maven Nation. Welcome to today's episode. I'm Nancy Marshall, the PR Maven, and I've been working in public relations for many decades now, and I have a special interest in personal branding, which is what makes you stand out from everyone else who does the same thing that you do. And we're talking today with somebody who definitely stands out in a crowd, his name is Marty Greif, and he is the president of Sight Tuners. Welcome, Marty. Well, thank you, Nancy. Thank you for having me. Well, Marty, I have to give a shout out to Heroic Public Speaking, which is where the two of us actually met last year. And Heroic Public Speaking is this amazing school, I guess you'd call it, or professional development center in Lambertville, New Jersey, where speakers go to fine tune their craft and to develop keynote speeches or TED Talks or workshops. And both you and I did that, Marty. And yep. now we're presenting our workshops and keynote speeches around the world. Yep, just got back from Romania. So that was uh, an interesting uh, experience. I know, I'm so impressed with how you've been going international. That's great. So Marty, tell us, well, actually, I'm going to tell our listeners a little bit about your impressive background. Marty Greif is a digital marketing expert, author, and renowned international speaker who has captivated audiences worldwide with his transformative strategies. With over 25 years of experience in sales and marketing, he brings an unrivaled level of expertise and a passion for driving revenue growth. Currently serving as president of Site Tuners, Marty is responsible for nurturing partner relationships, creating value for the customer base, and overseeing day-to-day -day operations for his award-winning digital marketing agency. But his impact extends far beyond his professional achievements. He is a man of compassion and social responsibility, and I have witnessed that myself since meeting him a year ago. He serves as a board member for Vincent House, which is a respected charitable organization dedicated to supporting individuals with mental health challenges. This philanthropic involvement showcases Martin's commitment to making a positive impact on society and creating a better world. So Marty, tell us about your career and how you got into it in the first place. Okay. Well, uh... I started out as a, uh, as a developer. I used to do real work, um, and now I talk to people. <laughs> uh, uh, and one night, I remember going to a trade show for uh, a trade fair for, you know, looking for employees. And uh, I was a technical person, and these people looked at me, and they said, oh, my God, you know our software, and you can speak to people without drooling on yourself. You should be in marketing. <laughs> and you're laughing, but I'm dead serious. That was the conversation we had. And the next thing I know, I joined a, a, a publicly traded software company. And within a couple of years, I was director of mar uh, product marketing, running a $120 million piece of their business. And it just exploded from there. So, um, And it's always been about, with marketing, about the, the visitor. And that's how it all started. It's looking at what other people need. That's so, right. When you say the visitor, do you mean the visitor to a website? Well, it's the visitor to a website, but in the old days, it would have been, um, you know, the the person that comes to an in-person seminar, you know, thinking about what they need, or it would have been the people that receive a direct mail piece, or whatever the marketing thing is. Today, though, it's all online. So it's all about your visitors. That's right. Well, I do think that sometimes with technology, we forget that we're dealing with humans <laughs> and uh, you know, it's all about how you make people feel ultimately, you know, you want to make people feel good and valued and respected and uh, a website needs to do that. Also respect individuals. 
Oh, absolutely. You know, it, 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 you know what we say, and we joke around about this, but, you know, however you treat people in person, which hopefully is in a good way, but however you treat people in person is how you should treat them on the website. Uh, people buy from people they know, like, and trust. And if you are not focusing on the visitor, um, guess what? You're not going to achieve success on them. That's right. Cool. And people want to be recognized as individuals also. And uh, people are different. So <laughs> the more you can get to know them, the more they're likely to like and trust you. Oh, absolutely. And some of us, like me, are more different than other people. But it's okay. <laughs> I'm kind of different too, Marty. That might, might be why we like each other. <laughs> 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 so conversion rate optimization, how did you get involved with it and what is it exactly? So conversion rate optimization is basically making sure that all of your touch points that you have with your, your, your potential clients and or website visitors uh, are persuasive. And there's a number of ways to do that. Um, but think of us you know, generally as the online persuasion people, we get people to take more, uh, they buy more, they, they subscribe to things, they become leads, whatever it is the website wants people to do, we make that more persuasive. The way I get started in this is a friend of mine um, founded Site Tuners, and oh, it's gotta be about uh, 12 years ago that he called me and he said, Marty, could you come join us? I was retired at the time and he said, could you come join us? Um, I'd like you to be uh, our VP of sales and the adult in charge. And I thought that was really funny. And so I joined them. He wasn't joking. I actually had to be the adult in charge. I'm like, oh my God, are you kidding me? And so, uh, so, but you know, it was great. I, I wound up loving what I was doing. And, um, and we wound up, uh, I guess it was in 2019, he and uh, the other founder decided they wanted to do other things. So um, I bought the company, uh, you know, I just, you know, I was like, yeah, I like this, I, you know, I want to keep doing this. And so we've grown it and it's been a blast. So how did I get there? I got there, you know, kind of by accident, but I was already a marketing professional and a friend said, help. So I Yeah. And you really are the adult in charge if you're the one that owns the company. Well, today, yeah. Yeah, right. <laughs> so, so. so what kinds of clients are your ideal target market? Um, people who listen. Um, <laughs> yeah. So um, <laughs> I know that sounds a little strange, but what we do is we look at people's touch points and we make them better. The problem is people have blinders on when they look at their own marketing. And a lot of times people do what we call the opera school of marketing. And it's like, me, 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 me. It's all about me. I don't care about you. you know, so <laughs> that sounds like a Catholic church. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, don't do that. So, so what happens is, is they, they say, well, you know, our visitors need to know this and they need to know that and they need to know. Here's the thing. My opinion of someone's website doesn't matter and neither does the, the, the owner of the company, okay, uh, for the clients. They have to be people who are willing to listen because at the end of the day, the only people that matter are the website visitors and the people that are giving them money. They're becoming the sales, the leads, the subscriptions, whatever they are. And there's so many tools that tell you what those people are looking for. So if a client will listen to, to understanding that it's not about them. It's about the visitors. Those are the successful clients. And we even have a test we put people through. You know, we don't tell them it's a test until after if they pass. Yeah. Um, so when we first talk to somebody, uh, and Nancy, you've seen me do this, where we look at a website together and I point out all the things that are wrong from a best practices point of view. Right. And we call that internally the ugly baby review. Okay, <laughs> because we call your baby ugly and you go, OK, you're listening. But if you justify it all, all right, then it's like, oh, they're not going to be a good client. They're not going to listen. So, I mean, we jokingly call it the ugly baby review. But but here's the thing. We all know there's ba ugly babies out there. Right. I mean, I say, well, where do you think ugly people come from? No, that's not <laughs> <okay>. <laughs> my point is, 
is is if you really call their baby ugly and they listen and they absorb what you're saying, those are the people we like working with. Okay. Wrong answer, Nancy. Sorry about that. <laughs> what if the baby just can't be fixed? <laughs> yeah. Well, in fairness, um, we also won't take on a client unless we think we can get them at least a 25% increase in their conversions and their revenue. Some things just aren't going to work, you know, and they've got a business idea that just makes no sense or, you know, there's just not a market for it. I mean, we can't work magic if there's not really a market for something. Right. Right. And I've seen you do analysis of sites and things such as having the telephone number in the upper right hand corner where people's eyes tend to go first. Yeah. And then something called a trust bar. Do you want to talk about what a trust bar is? Sure. So um, so let's talk about the phone number first. Just, okay. just so because everybody, everyone always gets nervous when they hear they have to put their phone number up on a website. Real companies have their phone number on the desktop in the top right hand corner. And on mobile, it's the click to call icon. Okay. Right. Um, it increases the phone calls. I will not argue that. It does increase your phone calls, but it absolutely increases the conversion rate for sales, subscriptions, and leads much greater than it does phone calls. Right. So having said that, and we've tested this literally in, it's gotta be dozens and dozens of countries around the world. And it always comes to be the case. So for those of you listening, if you think it's painful to put the phone number up there because you can't answer the phone, have it go to a voicemail system where you give them lots of love when they get there. Thank you for calling, you know, the PR Maven. You know, we're so happy you're, and give them some value in it. All right. Um, don't be like the cable company, like for one, pre, you know, press one for this, press two to be annoyed, press three to bang your head against. Don't do that. Okay. So give them some love. So phone number is important. It is a trust symbol. Nancy is also talking about the trust bar. Wherever you have a call to action of something you want someone to do, have trust underneath it. And a trust bar could be anything from a trust statement like join thousands of customers worldwide, over 10 million products shipped. Uh, it could be reviews. It could be better business bureau logos, all sorts of different things that show that you are a trustworthy company. Wherever you've got a call to action, you want to have some trust. And then when you go further on a page, you have other trust because you don't want to repeat the same trust over and over again because they'll get bored of it. So. <laughs> I'm just laughing because I'm going back to the ugly baby. Could you say, oh, my mother says I'm beautiful? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We have some interesting conversations with people, let me tell you. Yeah. <laughs> but no, recently I built a new website for prmaven.com and I encourage everyone to take a look. And I put a bar of logos, all of the logos for the organizations that I'm a member of, like the Women's Presidents Organization and the Chamber of Commerce and other trustworthy organizations to show that the PR Maven is part of a larger network of trustworthy organizations. So yep. I, I yep. thank you for that idea. Yeah, I know. There's all sorts of trust. And that's a great example of a trust bar. It's not just you, but you're recognized by real organizations. You could also put logos of companies you work with. I mean, I, all of that works. Yeah, very good. And and client testimonials as well. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. Exactly. And reviews, the numbers, you know, five-star reviews, all of that good stuff. So Marty, is there one thing that you've learned over the years that could be a game changer for our listeners? Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, and and for those of you listening, let me apologize about what I'm going to say in advance. Okay. Um, I'm actually um, a selfish person. I'm self-centered. I think about myself first. And the reason for that is I'm an animal, okay? And so are you. You are all animals. Every single listener is an animal. And because of that, we have these animal instincts that helped us survive when our, we were had our ancestors who were cavemen. And so if you take yourselves away from being selfish and you think about the other person, that will come through in all your interactions. And Nancy and I have talked about this. 
So very simple way to solve this. I'll give you two things you can do right away that have almost nothing to do with your website and have everything to do with your website. The first thing is go read Dale Carnegie's How to Win Friends and Influence People and read it twice a year and practice what's in it. All right, that's the easy thing to do. And yet for some people it's hard. The other thing that's really hard to do, but will make a difference in your life is talk to strangers, which Nancy is really good at, <laughs> all right? Talk to strangers, learn about them. And here's the hard part. Don't use the word I. Mm. Because if you don't use the word I, what happens is you have to think about them. So instead, well, I have experience doing that. Instead, I have experience doing that. You would say something like, that's interesting. That's interesting experience. Tell me more about your experience doing that. I can relate it to mine a little bit, but tell me about yours. Oh my God, now we're talking about the other person. I will tell you that if you do this, this will make you, um, heck, it'll make you a better person. It'll make you more interesting. It'll make you the, the person that people want to talk to. And it'll make you more successful in business. It'll make you better with your employees, with your boss, whoever you're working with. And when it becomes a habit, you will start to do that on your website. And when you do those things on your website, people will give you money. Yes, because they need to know, like, and trust you to do business with you. Absolutely. <laughs> well, that's very good advice, Marty. I, I, I'm glad you shared that. Uh, because people will actually like you more if you listen to them talk about themselves. Yeah, it's in Dale Carnegie's book. It, I mean, it's it, it just, I, I literally, I mean, I know it's an old book, but it's so, it, people haven't changed. We haven't changed from 50,000 years ago. His book's 100 years old. We haven't changed. Read the book. <laughs> <laughs> well, Dale Carnegie didn't have email or texting or all the methods that we now use to connect but he knew how to connect with people face to face, right? Yeah. And, but what's interesting is, is emails and your website and texting, we've gotten lazy. And so all of our bad animal traits come through in email and text and so on. And it's, it's just awful. It's just awful. And so bad behavior in person is, is harder to have than bad behavior online. It's easy. To, to have bad, look at, you know, X or Twitter, and there's plenty of bad behavior out there, okay? I'm telling you, use the book. It will make a difference in your life and in your success. Yes, good recommendation. Actually, later in the show, I'm gonna ask you for a book recommendation, but you can either repeat that one or give us another one. Oh, I've got a couple that have changed my life. Oh, so. good, good, good. Well, we're gonna hear more about Marty's book recommendations and more about his career. But first, I want to remind our listeners that you can get the first chapter of my book, Grow Your Audience, Grow Your Brand, by going to prmaven.com slash giveaway and sign up and we'll send you the first chapter. And now we're going to hear from our friends at Sprague and Curtis Real Estate. And then we'll be back with more from Marty Greif. Sprague & Curtis is a locally owned real estate company. We're primarily focused in central Maine. Uh, I got excited about Nancy's book because she's so well known in the area for her marketing and branding techniques and uh, we're always looking to expand and learn and grow and um, so a lot of us here at the office decided that we wanted to uh, read her book and learn some new techniques. It benefits Sprague & Curtis to have a large brand and audience um, because there can often be uh, multiple years between transactions with clients, um, so it's important to network them with them and, and stay in touch with them in those in-between periods. And this book really helped us uh, learn some techniques and methods to, to continue to do that. We organized a small book group with Nancy's book uh, with brokers in our office this winter to share information and remind ourselves how important it is to always be working on our network and continually reaching out to our customers. Platforms like social media are important in expanding your business, but equally as important are handwritten notes, cards, letters. She inspired me to send her a note of appreciation, just thanking her for the book and her insight. 
In reading Nancy's book, I was excited to look to continue to grow our brand and our audience. I think she does a great job of um, motivating us. Nancy's book really helped me learn a few things in marketing and branding and how important it is to stay on top of reaching out to clients periodically, staying top of mind, providing useful information, and, and really telling our story as a company. Well, I'm glad that we shared that little commercial after having that conversation because actually that whole video came about because they read my book and then sent me a note in the mail. And then I reached out. I had never met them before. And I reached out and met the two of them. And uh, they agreed enthusiastically to make that video. So yeah, that was just an example of a human to human contact that has, uh, has now lasted several years. So thank you. And uh, we're here with Marty Greif, who's the president and owner of Sight Tuners. And I had met Marty through Heroic Public Speaking, which is a program that both of us went through last year to become keynote speakers. So Marty, what is the difference between conversion rate optimization and search engine optimization? So search engine optimization are the techniques used to make sure that your website ranks uh, in the in the search engines, Google and or Bing. Um, and there's a number of techniques and tricks to do that, uh, but it's basically about having really, really good content up there, having people backlink to that content and so on. So it's all about getting traffic to your website. Conversion rate optimization, on the other hand, is making sure that the traffic that comes to your website actually does what you want them to do. And there's a difference between driving traffic and making use of the traffic. So conversion rate optimization is making sure that the traffic, when it gets to your website, takes whatever your desired actions so that you create a user journey for people. Because when people come to your website, they're anywhere from wondering what you do to needing exactly what you do or somewhere in between. So those are all different visitor or user journeys. And so you need to have different visitor journeys for those people so that they can move through your funnel. And that's conversion rate optimization. Is it important to really understand the avatars or the personas of the people you expect to come to your site so you can, uh, you can have content that attracts them? You want to understand your visitors, all right? But you got to be careful with personas, all right? Uh, and so let's talk about personas. We've seen personas where it's like, you know, Jane is a 32-year-old housewife who likes to drink wine. And she, no, don't do that, okay? I, you know, that's not helpful. And we've seen those personas. People bring them to us and they, Here, here's what we think. And it's like, no, okay? Instead, it's, you know, Jane is 32 years old, right? This is the problem she's trying to solve, okay? These are her constraints in solving the problem, okay? Here's what she needs to know to be able to take the next step. So it's all about what information Jane or John or whoever needs to be able to go from where they are to where you want them to get to. And it's all about solving their problem. Because as I said earlier, it's about them, it's not about you. So if you understand your visitors and what their pain points are, what they need, and you make that user journey about them, and you turn your personas into something that is not fluffy, but really relevant to their pain points, that's when it works. Yeah, because if Jane is so new in, in her persona description, you say she likes to drink wine, but your business has absolutely nothing to do with wine. You do auto repair or you yeah. sell books or something. You need to align how you solve Jane's problem. Well, well, that's true. Unless you're doing auto repair and you're kind of, you know, sketchy. So you want to get her drunk before you give her the bill. But that's a different problem. Okay? <laughs> you're right. <laughs> and then that's you need like to get it. her out of jail too. Yeah. <laughs> So what are some changes that people could make right away to their website to improve conversion rate optimization? Okay, simplest thing that they can do is figure out 
how they would describe their business in three to maybe six to maybe 10 words. Right. There's a lot of work involved in doing that correctly and having that clarity and that describing the business and what they do needs to be relevant to the visitor. It's not about what they do so they feel proud about, oh, look what I do. It's about the visitor and they see whatever that messaging is and they go, that makes sense. Now, what do you do with that? So there's a little bit of work there. But once you do that, that messaging goes on underneath either your logo up in the top on or your website or right next to your logo, or it's a bar right under your logo. And the reason you do that is because you have no control over what page somebody lands on from uh, an SEO or an organic perspective. They may land on your about us page, a blog page, you know, a product page, a service page. You have no idea where they're gonna wind up. It's not like paid ads where you direct them somewhere. So from an SEO perspective, if you have that in the top, it will be on every single page. So no matter what page they land on, they will know what it is your company does in a way that relates to what their need is and solves a whole host of problems. Right, yeah. I've heard about uh, the concept of you know solving what keeps them awake at night Yes. to help yes. them sleep through the night. So, I mean, think of it this way. When someone lands on a website, they ask themselves three questions. Am I in the right place? How do I feel about this site? And what am I supposed to do here? Well, that am I in the right place question is somewhat dependent upon the upstream messaging. But if they land on the, on the website and they're confused, they're going to leave, right? And here's the other thing. Before somebody comes to your website, you don't know if they're in a happy place. They're like, yeah. It's all good, or or they just had a fight with their spouse, or the dog peed on the rug, or they just had a fight with God, or they stubbed their toe. You have no idea what they're going on. And every time you make them think, you're using up a little bit more of that patience. So don't make them think. Make it easy for them to know who you are, what you do, and why it's important to them. What if your website looks really archaic? I mean, if your site gives off the vibe that you had built it. 20 years ago, does that turn people off? Oh yeah, uh, so it, 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 uh, now here, I will tell you something interesting though, that this is gonna be counterintuitive. So it can't look old and dated, but it doesn't have to be pretty. You design for the audience. So when we design like a fashion site, oh, it's pretty. But we once designed a site for, um, for people selling industrial generators. These were $300,000 industrial generators. And our audience was basically fat old men sitting in a windowsless office in a warehouse. They don't care about foo-foo and pretty. They just want the, the, the generator, right? So we designed a site that was, well, honestly, a little ugly, but it was designed for the visitor. I'm joking about fat old men, but my point being, you design for the visitor, right? And so it doesn't have to be beautiful. It has to be relevant to the visitor, but it can't look old. Right. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I think so many, so many of us who spend a lot of time online, we can tell whether a website is, is modern or not immediately. Oh, yeah. Immediately. Yeah, immediately. Exactly. Can you give us an example of a success story, a client that you've helped produce amazing results for? Sure. Um, we have a client, uh, they're based out of um, Atlanta, Georgia, uh, Naraju. Uh, they sell uh, skincare and hair care products for um, African-American. Uh, uh, and so that's their, their target audience. When we first looked at their website, I thought it was a blog. I didn't even know it was an e-commerce site. And this is on our website as one of our case studies. So we changed it and focused it on the visitor and we increased their conversion rate by 277%, okay? Because instead of making it all about them, we made it all about the visitor. We made it easy for them to navigate. And the whole case study is up on the website. Um, now in fairness, in fairness, you know, what they came to us looked old, outdated, needed help, right? Mm -hmm. If the website is a good looking website or it's modern, we're not going to increase the conversion rate by 277%. But if you come to us with something that looks like who did it and ran, okay, 
we're going to get you amazing results. If you've got something that's already modern, okay, then you should expect maybe a 25 to 50% boost in conversions and revenue. You know, we can't make something that's already working well triple its revenue, right? But we can still get a lot of juice out of it. Anyway, long answer, Nancy. Sorry. I'm the I'm the king of long answers today. Yeah. <laughs> now you're imparting a lot of useful information, Marty. <laughs> And how how do people work with you if, if they're interested in working with you? Like, how do you get started? So, um, well, because I, I gave it away and I, maybe I shouldn't have given it away, but people can go to our website and they sign up with a, a, on a link that says speak with a conversion expert. And we spend 30 minutes and we basically do the ugly baby with them and we tell them what's wrong with their website and we pay attention to what they say. Um, assuming they go through that and they're open to, um, to, uh, taking constructive criticism on their website, most of our clients are on retainer with us and we work with them on an ongoing basis to continually improve the website because conversion rate optimization is similar to playing whack-a-mole. Nancy, I, did, did you ever play whack-a-mole in like the, in the fairs, right? Yeah. So you whack the mole and another one pops up and you whack that and another one pops up. And so it's and so what happens with conversion rate optimization is you you fix the home page. So they get to the product page or the service page or the category page. And then you fix that page and they get to the, the you know, the add to cart or the subscribe button or that. And then you fix that. And all along the scotch, because as you get more and more people going through your funnel and you get, oh my God, this is what's happening on that page. Oh, we got to fix that. Oh, this is what's happening on that page. We got to fix that. So we got to get them from the beginning of the funnel all the way through. And it just takes time to do it. And then when you do that, you're not done. You go back and you start and you make it even better again and you make it better again. Now there is a point of diminishing returns at some point we will park friends, but, but it's a process to get to the end result. And we found as crazy as this sounds, just by fixing people's home page as a starting point, it immediately increases their conversion rate and revenue. And then we work on the interior. Pages. Yeah. Well, I do think that, um, those of us who started our careers in the, in the day in the day and age of print, you know, where you created a brochure and you printed it, and there, good, got our brochure. It's hard to then update your mentality to the fact that a, bro, a website gives you feedback every single day. You can see how people are are engaging with your site. You know, whether they're moving from one page to another, or whether they're coming to the homepage and immediately leaving. So I think you need to look at a website as if it's like a, a focus group that you're having every day and uh, pay attention to how people are, are engaging with your site. Absolutely. Yeah, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go back to something that reminds me of, this is years and years ago, pre-internet, we uh, were doing an in-person seminar series and uh, our products were called uh, like the architect and things like that. And we sent out a direct mail piece in a tube. It was a blueprint. And in the blueprint uh, was a big corner office. And it said, your future office when you use our products. Okay. Yeah. We got a 12% response rate on direct mail. And the attendance was 150% of what we had, uh, of the people they brought other people to it. Wow. It generated millions and millions of dollars in revenue because even back then the direct mail piece was focused on them, not on us. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. And sometimes there is a place and a time for direct mail, even in this day and age, right? Absolutely. Yeah. So. Yeah. So Marty, is there a book, an app or a podcast that you have found helpful in your career and life and why? You mean besides your podcast? Yes, exactly. Besides the PR Maven podcast. Okay, just check. <laughs> All right. So um, obviously, I already meant uh, talked about um, Dale Carnegie's How to Win Friends and Influence People, right, which is a mainstay. The next book I'm going to talk about is probably bizarre. I was VP of Marketing, and I got a book uh, from Dr. Beverly DeAngelis, and it was What Women Want Men to Know. And um, it's it's thick. It's a big book. And I think I read through the first 70 pages of the book and I went, oh my God, women cannot possibly be this dysfunctional. So I asked the women in the office, 
do you do this? And I went, oh yeah, that's exactly how we think. And I read further and I went, oh my God, men are really this dysfunctional. So here's the thing. We're all dysfunctional. We <laughs> just are, okay? <laughs> and, and by reading that book and understanding how men and women think, this is almost like men are from Mars, women are from Venus uh, on steroids. But it really made me stop and think about communication skills. And, and it's a spectrum. Not all men think one way or all women think another way. It's a spectrum. There's, you know, some women think more like men, men think more like women. It's okay. And uh, there's no judgment in that. But when you start to understand how people process information, and that's what I used out of this book, it absolutely changed all of the marketing I did. And it, it made me not only a better marketeer, it made me a better employee, a better boss. It made me a better spouse. It made me a better um, uh, father. I mean, it is amazing how it was life changing. Wow. Right? I'm going to have to read that book. So, yeah, it's, it's a little bizarre. It's a little dated now, but but it was really bizarre. And of course, I'll also plug my book, you know, True Connections, Relationship Marketing in the Digital World. OK, it's up on Amazon. That's and, right. Yeah. And that book is all that's designed for basically executives, business owners, um, not necessarily marketing practitioners, um, although I've had a lot of marketing practitioners tell me, you know what? You're right. I really need to focus on the visitor, but it's designed for the business owner and the executive to be able to really get their marketing under control. That's great. Thank you for those recommendations. So, yeah, and I know that my first one was bizarre. I know the, uh, the, the Dr. Beverly, but I'm telling you, it's a good book. Yeah, I know. I believe you. <laughs> so, Marty, how can people get in touch with you? Um, the easiest way is is to go to our website and and book a meeting with uh, uh, one of our experts, uh, or they can email me directly if they like. And my email address is marty at sitetuners dot com. Um, I uh, I do get a little overwhelmed with emails, so I, I will get back to you. It just may take a little while. My apologies, but. I do answer all my emails. So I know you're very responsive. You always respond to me promptly. I appreciate that. Well, yeah, but that's because it's you, Nancy. <laughs> Who wouldn't respond to you immediately? Come on. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> so thank you, Marty. This has been a lot of fun. I'm so glad we were able to connect again. I look forward to meeting again soon, hopefully. And I know that our listeners in PR Maven Nation enjoyed our conversation as well. So if, if anyone in PR Maven Nation has other questions or topics that they'd like to hear about, you can feel free to email me at nancy at prmaven.com. And please check out our newly updated website with the recommendations that Marty gave me at prmaven.com. And I hope you all have a great day, PR Maven Nation. Thanks for listening to this episode of the PR Maven podcast. I invite you to share a review of the podcast on iTunes or your favorite podcast player. Be sure to subscribe to our podcast so you never miss an episode. You can also join the PR Maven Nation on Facebook. It's free to join and it's a great community of like-minded individuals who are all looking to learn and grow from one another. If you use an Alexa device, use your Alexa app to search the skills and games section to find and enable the PR Maven podcast flash briefing. This will give you access to exclusive content and more PR and marketing advice. Thanks again for listening and have a great rest of your week, PR Maven Nation.